Hello everyone, so welcome to this uh, new video on the channel. In this video, I am going to show you how you can install Kali Linux 2019, the latest version onto VirtualBox. So let's get started. So first of all, you have to go to www.kali.org slash downloads and I have downloaded the Kali Linux 64-bit uh, version you can download 32-bit uh, according to your system so I have downloaded this 64-bit and the version is 2019.2 uh, so it's a 3.2 GB uh, file and this is uh, that file so here as you can see I have this ISO file so now I'm going to run the virtual box So here is my virtual box now. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. So I'm going to click on new. Then I'm going to specify the name of this virtual box. Kali. Then it is Linux. And the version here, uh, if you will see the list here, then there is no uh, Kali Linux option so I'm going to select other Linux 64 bit and I'm going to specify half the memory that I have on this machine so I have 8 gigs of uh, RAM so I have specified half of it that is 4 gigs and I'm going to let this be as it is click on create then I'm going to uh, set this storage to 15 GB and I'm going to keep everything as it is continue and here I have the virtual machine created now I'm going to go into the settings here and here I have to navigate down to the storage and then here as you can see this option it says empty so we have to select this uh, ISO file so here I am going to click on this icon and choose the virtual optical disk file then I am going to navigate to desktop folder and the ISO file and I'll click on ok and I have uh, this Kali Linux ISO file uh, loaded here so I'm going to click on OK and then we have to just start this virtual machine now here we have to go on to the graphical install okay so here we have to select the language first so I have selected language then we have to select the country then the configuration for keyboard so I am going to keep uh, this first option selected okay so we have uh, to configure the network here so here you have to specify the host name you can write anything I'll just keep Kali and then domain name if you have then you can specify it otherwise you can uh, leave it blank and then uh, you have to set the password for uh, when you log into your system first time then you're going to use this password or when you have to access uh, 
or when you have to uh, have the root access uh, of the system then you are going to uh, use this password that you will specify here so I'm going to create this continue okay so here uh, we have these four options for uh, partitioning the disk now in the first option uh, if you select this option then the partitioning will be automatically done so in virtual box yeah you can uh, use this first option as uh, you don't have any other operating system uh, on your disk because you have created a virtual disk so uh, it will be fine if you uh, use this but I am going to use manual and show you the partitioning uh, that you can do or have to do uh, when you uh, install Kali Linux so this is the uh, disk the virtual disk which we have created uh, while we created the virtual machine so I'm going to double click on it then so here as you can see we have this free space shown here so I'm going to double click on it create a new partition then I'm going to specify 1 GB keep it primary and beginning and then here I'm going to select this as uh, my boot partition and I'm going to click on uh, continue then I'm going to create a swap partition so for swap uh, you usually can use uh, whatever RAM you have you can use uh, the swap uh, you can create a swap partition of that same size I'm going to create half of the size what I have uh, RAM on uh, this virtual box so I have 4 GB of RAM for uh, this virtual box so I have selected half of it and I'm going to uh, set this as I'm going to set this as swap area and then continue so we have a, a swap area also created now with the remaining free space uh, I'm going to set this as my root directory so I'm going to continue and continue and as you can see here the root file system so I have selected this just the slash and I'm going to turn the partitioning and click on continue so all these three partitions uh, we have created so now uh, I'm going to just finish the partitioning and click on the continue and here all of those partitions are also listed so you can verify those and I'm going to select yes and continue and before that if you want to make any changes then you can click on no and continue and go back there and make your changes so I'm going to select yes and continue Okay, so the installation is uh, started now this is going to take some time so I'm going to just fast forward this okay so the installation is done and here uh, it is saying to, if we want to use a network mirror now if uh, you want to use a network mirror then it's okay but I'm going to select no here and the 
reason uh, to use a network mirror is just that you can get new versions of a software so I have selected uh, no so it's installing the bootloader okay so now uh, I'm going to install the bootloader to the master boot record so I'm going to let this selected as yes and continue okay so here uh, as you can see that uh, we have our uh, hard drive specified so uh, I can continue here with uh, my hard drive selected and the grub bootloader will be installed there so this will be installed on the boot partition that we created okay so the installation is complete so I'm going to click on continue and the system is going to restart automatically okay so here I have to select this first option okay so here uh, we have the login screen it might take some time uh, for your system to come to this login screen so you have to just uh, stay there so here I have this uh, login screen so now I'm going to write the user that is root now as we haven't created any user so by default uh, we are going to log in into our uh, system using uh, the root so I'm going to write root as the username and in the password uh, the password that we created during the installation uh, that is uh, the root password so I'm going to write that and sign in Okay, so we have our uh, Kali Linux installed successfully. So let me go to setting. So as this is on a virtual box, so it is going to be slow than uh, if you directly install this onto the system. Okay, so let's go into details. So as you can see here, uh, this is on a Oracle virtual machine, the disk space is here, memory and all those details are here. So this is how uh, you can install the Kali Linux onto your system. Okay, so I have uh, configured the screen resolution so as you can see here we have logged in as the root user so we can go into the account setting and we can create a user so i'm going to click on new user and then here uh, i'll specify the name of the user so this then i'm set i'm going to set the type of this user to administrator and then I'm going to set the password okay so I've set the password and I'll click on add so this is the new user that I've created so now let's log into this user so I'm going to uh, log out okay so, and here I'm going to uh, log in to the user that I just created
okay so this is uh, the user that I created so we are logged into this new user so this is how you can create a new user so uh, when you first install a Kali Linux then you have to log in with your uh, root uh, the username will be root and password will be the password uh, that you set while installing the Kali Linux and then you'll have to create a user after uh, your first boot so this is how you can uh, install and configure your Kali Linux so that's it for this video if you like this video then click on that like button so if you want to see more of these installation guides then subscribe to this channel and I also upload some uh, programming related videos so if you want then you can check that out as well so that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one